Hey everyone, Thunderbob here, and tonight I'm checking out Solasta, Crown of the Magister. Uh, this is a new role-playing game. Uh, it actually it runs on the uh, advanced uh, D&D rule set, though it doesn't actually take place in the Dungeons & Dragons uh, like game world. It's kind of its own thing from my understanding, but this is uh, kind of a nice companion piece to Baldur's Creek three that just came out, so I'm interested in checking this out. Let's just mess with the setting a little bit here, make sure everything is maxed out. Ultra. Alright, looks like I got everything pretty much high as I can go. So you've got like a pool of characters. Launching a new game with a party of Do I need to create the characters first? Let's just create a character. Let's just see how in depth it is here. The first step is to select an ancestry, which will determine your appearance. Okay. So it looks like you got like a lot of your traditional you got hill dwarves, half elves, high elves, humans, marsh halflings. It's interesting. Swampy halflings. Swampy hobbits. And it seems like they have different starting stats. The humans have kind of a plus one to everything. Dwarves get two constitution, one wisdom. Half-elves get two charisma. Though it looks like they also get differing numbers of moves. That one to all is interesting. I wonder what their downside is. Common in one language of your choice. Okay, so they get like some extra resilience. You get extra skills. Dirty plus two. You're so tiny. It's like a tiny person. You got a lot of short races. Well, I guess elves aren't short. But... I might just go with a human. Well, these halflings are kind of tempting get two dexterity, one constitution, a little bit less moves, you get some luck though, nimbleness. Let's just go with the generic human. Next you click, you pick a class. New powers and even subclasses are granted. You know, I haven't played D&D &D in video game form or, or even in real life in a very very long time and I don't know a lot about the current rule set but this definitely seems very in-depth what I read with this is just a beta and these characters and and the save may not work in future releases so I don't know that I'm gonna like go super in detail as like I would if I was playing this for real for a hundred hours um, I feel like I want something that's kind of easy to start with Oh, that's cool. So they give you like a, here is what to expect later. The interface and like just everything looks very polished. Like this is a very well put together user interface. A wizard. I always like wizards, but I feel like they're a very difficult starting class. And this is my human who's just kind of all around. I might just go with a fighter. The background determines your character's history prior to adventuring. Offers equipment and proficiencies, but also the ability to select personality flags. Personality flags determine the social behaviors. Interesting. The alignment determines... So that's just a traditional like alignment, I'm assuming. You can create strong personality aspects by combining the same flags from background and the alignment. Okay. Uh, if he's a fighter, I feel like not an academic, 
not an acolyte. Maybe a lawkeeper. Ooh, a cell sword. I like that idea. So you get different starting stuff. You get a notebook as an academic, crafting starting pack, sigil ring, and some money. Military campaign ribbon. Hold alt for more information. I wonder what if that maybe that comes up in the story or something. So you start with gold, noble garb, and a poisoner's kit. Interesting. They all have pragmatism and caution. Or is that? Okay, you pick two. Interesting. The system is very... <laughs> it's very cool. I'm gonna go with a sellsword who is prone to violence and cynicism. I'm basically making um, Braum from uh, Game of Thrones, I think. Okay, I'm missing something. Oh, I gotta pick my... So he's violent and he's cynical. He should also be pragmatic, I feel like. But there's also some, some altruism in him. Yeah. I have no idea if that's a good combination. All real dice rolls. Ability scores are six core attributes defining where your character excels. Strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence. Yeah, your basic stats. Ability score can be generated by several methods, either randomly or using a point system. Classes have preferred ability scores, for example, intelligence for wizards, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, if you play D&D, you probably get this. All character and ancestries provide a bonus. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, so you can either do just a pool of points which it looks like you can freely edit, or do a dice roll. Oh, that's a really clever way to do it. That's interesting. That definitely gives you like a pretty big range because this gives you 27 total points, right? And you start at nine across the board. Whereas this gives you like a range. But you don't start with the like the nine, so it's like, The other one I'd have 9, 18, 27, 36, 54, uh, 62, 63, and 63 plus 27. I feel like you get about the same either way. I like to be able to kind of customize though. Strength, he needs some dexterity, he's got to have some constitution. He's charis charismatic. Not like dumb. Oh, is there like a cap? Yeah, fighter, paladin, ranger, rogue. Everyone, because that's just like health, wizards, 
Cleric Ranger, Paladin Sorcerer. Seems like you can only put, like if I drop one there, oh, because it costs more the further you go, okay. Am I like an idiot at this level? I don't know. Let's just keep going. Some character classes allow the selection of a fighting style. Fighting style grants you a specific advantage for using combat. Some character classes are granted a secondary fighting style. So he's a cell sword. I feel like he's probably going to be like dueling. I'm still going with Game of Thrones, basically. So you get wall deal. Well, you're wielding a melee weapon in one hand and no other weapons, you gain a plus two bonus rolls with that weapon. Can I use a shield? Where you get plus one to AC, you gain a plus two bonus to attack rolls with ranged. When you roll a one or a two on a damage die for an attack you make with a melee weapon that you're wielding with two hands, you can roll the dream. Oh. I think I'm gonna go with dueling. Proficiencies. This stage lets you acquire proficiencies. Blah blah blah. The right side of the screen lets you choose your proficiency. Most attacks and ability checks use proficiency. Uh, the bonus starts at plus two and increases at levels five and nine, etc. I kind of understood that. So. Can't open. Okay, you're proficient with this already. With your skill checks. I can't do all of them. I think because of like my my starting intelligence, maybe. This is so complex. I'm 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 not gonna play like a hundred hours of this. I kind of just want to jump in and play a, a little while, um, and then probably wait for the full release, or else I would probably spend three hours just designing my team. So I get two class skills, is that what it is? Choose two skills from acrobatics, animal handling, history, insight, intimidation. I think perception is good. language. So I already know common, right? I can learn an ancient language. And go with dwarves. Oh, you can get a secondary? background languages. Okay. I didn't get to pick this stuff. I guess that's just based on my previous selections. The final stage is your character customization. It's obviously not quite as detailed as Baldur's Gate 3. Again, this is a much smaller team, but uh, that's not too bad. It's, uh, let's just see how much Many options as I would uh, maybe hope for, but again, this is early, early access. Like it literally just came out. 
my suspicion is that there will probably be a lot more at release. That's a goofy hairstyle. Sure. That's a beard. Yeah, that looks pretty decent. Blue eyes like I have. Muscles like I don't have. Good kill! That was something. Wait till the next one. Damn. That's a good light. At last. Don't let me down. Good kill. Come on. Harder. Good arms you got. Don't let me down. I feel like that second one is like a cell sword voice. Just give me Bob Ross a second ago. Look at that. I gotta go with it. Okay. So I made it Bob Ross. I, I don't think I'm gonna go through all of these right now. I don't want to make this video just about creating characters. I actually want to see the game. Um, so there's my personal ones. Here's some pre-generated ones. Let's do a new adventure. Pools, available characters, understood. So definitely Bob Ross. Burden Redstone, I like that name. Okay, wait, am I just picking one character? Oh, okay, I'm picking four, I get it. Burden Redstone, that dude's got a cool name. A cool beard. Nalia Wildwind. Aristocratic Wizard, I do need a wizard, I'm sure of that. Got a fighter, a pilot, and a wizard. Rogue, ranger, fighter. I think I need a cleric. Some healing, definitely. That's a good fighter, pilot, and wizard, cleric. That's like a traditional, it's a traditional like grouping of characters. Before the Cataclysm, there were no gods on Celasta. No humans, either. Then, the rift opened. Some say it was a magical accident. Or the work of an evil god. No one knows for sure. The Cataclysm destroyed the old High Elf Empire. Manakalan, they called it. And twisted the land beyond recognition. Now, only the brave and the foolish go there. In search of ancient treasures. But something is happening deep in those badlands. Whatever it is, it can't be good. Okay. This beer tastes like donkey piss. Not that I'm complaining. <laughs> Hope I'm not too late. Ran into a bit of trouble on the way here. Sit, relax. Perhaps you'd enjoy a pint of this obnoxious ale. If you're here for the council job, get in line. Though if this Lord Karen doesn't show up soon, 
and they go looking for him. Another round, barkeeper. Four of your finest flagons of donkey piss, please. Looks like you've been waiting here a while. Indeed. You mentioned something about some trouble. Would you care to elaborate? Well, I was making my way here when three bandits leapt out of the bushes with crossbows. They dragged me off to some decrepit prison and tossed me in a filthy cell that smelled of rat piss. Don't know what was holding the place up. So is this the tutorial, I take it? Oh, you can get pretty close. I wasn't sure if this is all top down. It's uh, pretty decent looking. The animation in the cutscene there was obviously kind of rough. Uh, okay, select your character by clicking on the character in the 3D view. Select the whole party, you select all. You can also drag vertical. Yep, I played Baldur's Gate before. Right click and drag to rotate. Yep, you can also rotate using. Yep, under. Use WACD to move the camera around. Okay. It moves pretty pretty quickly. I'm getting 120 frames per second. Click on the journal button to open the quest log. Log list your current objectives. Adventure log. Quest log, bestiary, faction. So you can get faction uh, renown, basically. Some tutorials. Uh, the interface here, I think, is pretty pretty good. I feel like the environments are actually better than the character models, oddly. Or they think Baldur's Gate three, the character models are actually quite good. These environments are pretty detailed. I mean, for something like, most of the time you're gonna be playing up here, but even when I zoom in, like the details, it's pretty good. I'm saying pretty good a lot, sorry. So you can like, go back and see all of your previous conversations. That's gonna be a long log. This is the kind of game I think it is. Call through a hole, click the other side, you can get a better view. Either double click the character or tab. Baldur's Gate is a game I really, really enjoyed. The light will guide us. Pretty decent real-time shadows. The graphics don't mean that much to me. Like, I know I just bought a 3080 and I have, like, a ridiculously powerful computer. But I still play a lot of indie games, a lot of old-school games. Highlighted enemies are interactive. The cursor indicates the action that can be performed. No highlighted elements I can read. Ah. Secret passage. And you can like decouple from the character too if you want to like just kind of explore. Nothing else to see here, it looks like. And then tab brings it back. It's interesting adding like verticality to the traditional like Baldur's Gate kind of jump or climb sickly. Yep, depending on the character's strength, you can jump and climb between two and five cells. You can always jump over two, drop down three. Character with strength up below 15 and no proficiency cannot jump. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Nobody tosses a dwarf. Oh, can I get over there? I can't. Cool. 
potion, potion, potion. No path to destination. I'll probably need to come back over here. Can I climb? Cool. And I'm not going to play, you know, five hours of this today. I'm probably going to play maybe another eh, 15 to 30 minutes. I really want to just get into the combat and see how it runs. I'm pretty impressed with this so far. Like, it's, you know, Baldur's Gate's clearly a little further along. But this feels rather polished. The interface, the tutorial, like these pop-ups uh, are all really well done. Click on a chest or other container to loot it, everything you carry. Yeah. Some items can stack, just split a stack. Yeah, I can figure it out. This isn't my first radio. But if you want to know a secret, I never beat Baldur's Gate 2. I've restarted it so many times, and something always ends up taking me away from it. Um, it's still, even though I've never beaten it, one of my favorite games. And I've probably, I probably played it enough that I could have beaten it. But I always like lose my save, or another game comes out that distracts me. Nice move, that trick with the wall. Glad you're no worse for wear. This council needs to get organized. They have no right to keep us waiting like this. The council is likely busy with important matters of state, and we are not, so have patience. I have a tale to tell as well. I too was attacked, but I put an end to my enemies with blood and pain. Let's hear it then. Don't be shy. So now is this like the combat tutorial? Moving to a point in the yellow area uses your main action to dash. Dash doubles your maximum movement for the turn. However, you cannot use your action to attack or cast. Remember that you can move normally and then decide whether to dash further. Okay. That's a cool system. It's kind of like uh, XCOM-ish, where you can kind of like dash forward and use both of your, your movements. You there are literal dice rolls. Okay, I love this game now. Can I not? Do I need to like end turn? I'm Bob Ross, damn it. To attack an enemy using your default weapon, mouse over the and left click. You can cast an attack spell or switch weapons. You can try to shove an enemy back or down. If you shove an enemy into a pit, they'll fall. Alright, alright. So I've got some healing. I want to try to shove the dude. That. Oh, well, I guess I'm just gonna kill him. Ow. Clicking dodge uses your main action and provides the following. Until the start of your next turn, all attacks you can see have a disadvantage on their rolls to hit. You have an advantage on dexterity saving throws. Almost like an, like an overwatch or like a defensive kind of thing. I'm not, I don't want to push him that way, I want to push him that way. No quarter. I just wanted to push him off the side. And I'm getting 120-ish uh, frames here, which, I mean, I'm running a 10,700k plus a 3080. At 3440 by 1440, and this isn't a super, you know, 
demanding game, super um, you know, visually stunning game. So there's some good effects, like there's kind of some depth of field or like a bokeh effect in the background. That's nice. Like all the moving foliage. Like you see when I zoom in there, foliage kind of has like that depth of field effect going on. It's actually, um, I feel like the weakest point so far is the character models and animation. Could use a little bit of work. But the actual game world, I'm actually rather impressed with. Uh, to avoid an opportunity attack, you can use the disengage action. For the rest of your turn, you can move close to an enemy freely without any risk of opportunity attacks. Interesting. Disengage uses your main action, though, so you won't be able to attack or dash. Okay, I'm not quite sure the purpose of that. Disengage. And that should be like going behind the rock, right? Is that literally just like I'm gonna go hide? Yeah, that. <laughs> the wolf. What? Okay. I was not expecting that. I hope he addresses it in his story, like, yep, I died. Okay. So how much? I've got 13 or 13 health. That wolf just one shot? So they want me to disengage successfully, I guess. If you take disengage action, your movement doesn't provoke opportunity attacks the rest of your turn. That's what I did, I disengaged. And then I like went and hit over here. Health. Ah. Uh, I didn't see the push the thing. <laughs> nice. What a bunch of namby pambies. You're lucky you weren't attacked by Sorax. Shut your go. Or I'll shut it for you. The Badlands are thick with them. Shape-shifting bastards. Never mind him. He's just another drunk scavenger. Aren't all drunks basically stupid? Sorax might be legend, but orcs are quite real. And not just in the Badlands. I stumbled across a secret settlement right here in the Principality. Bullshit! I traveled here from the east and left the main highway, hoping to save time by traversing the hills. The views were magnificent but I should have kept my eye on the path because it gave way beneath my feet, plunging me into Stygian darkness. Stygian darkness. Voice acting could use a little bit. Oh, work. that's going to leave a mark. You'll explore deep, dark places without natural light. It makes exploration and combat harder, blah, blah, blah. You can equip torches, yep. You can light flammable items like torches by interacting with them while holding a torch or casting a flaming spell. Do I have a torch? I do have a torch. Light the two torches.
That one didn't stay lit, did it? Oh, I guess I could just... That thing. Upon my word, this is an orc hideout. The Malador is unmistakable. Cast healing spells, press the cast spell button and select a spell in order to recover. You can also use a potion. So like if you had a cleric or you had you didn't, you could still heal here. She starts with a lot of spells. I feel like starting with a wizard is good, useful. I gotta kill some orcs. There they are. Discretion is clearly the better part of valor in this instance. Activating cautious mode makes you slower, but it grants stupid effects. Hidden objects and traps are easier to find. When an enemy starts to notice your presence, a gauge appears. Remain three cells above the enemy in this mode, and you can't be detected. So gotta be three cells above. So can I just like walk past them? that chest over there. Those character models are pretty good actually. I feel like those are better than my starting character. Enjoying this so far. I um, I don't know that I'm gonna like spend, you know, a ton of time on this prior to full release, just because reading it sounds like your characters are gonna get wiped and you know you're potentially gonna start over for this type of game. I don't want to play through it multiple times. Like I'll probably maybe spend a couple of hours on this and then uh, wait for the full release. I think it could be a little clearer where you can go up and down. Is that always like the tree branches? No other means of egress is apparent. Fine. I shall wait until they go. These creatures do hunt, right? Just kill them all, you got magic. You always take a long rest to do so you need to gather your party. Yep. Many spellcatters also. No more spells than they can recall at a given time. Prepare spells presents those characters can use by... Uh, yeah, it's like Baldur's Gate. Check your hero's list of known spells. Cast spell as ritual. Does not use spell slot. Interesting. Ha! 
versus complete record roll hit points and half your hit dice maximum. actually going to need. Probably should have looked over here before I strode into their camp. I feel like there might be... I would have slaughtered every one of those green-skinned monsters. Orcs Probably one more of these. Distinctive stink. We should build a council for all this wasted time. We've all told a tale of our travels here. Oh, but one of us. Yes, but I have good reason for that. It's none of your bloody business. Come on now. Don't be a killjoy. We all sang for our supper. Now it's your turn. Fine. You want to know the truth? I stopped on the way here to visit an old friend of mine and discovered he was up to his eyeballs in debt with a loan shark. Oh, that's not good. Indeed. He put up a family heirloom as collateral and wanted me to reacquire it. Because you see, I can be quite stealthy when necessary. I like the format for the kind of tutorial here where it almost feels like that partners or the um, use cautious mode. Okay. Remain in cautious mode for a whole duration of the mission. You must make a stealth check in order. Okay. Uh, it feels like that. What is that story? Um, the, Can the Canterbury Tales. Right click and drag to rotate the camera. You can also use. You know, where it's like all these people come together and tell their little piece of the story and. One of my favorite novels, oh, yeah. uh, oh, thoughtful. the Hyperion uh, Cantos, uses kind of a similar motif that I really like. Given detective. I am using cautious mode. I'm sure that's just for the tutorial, though, but it, it's a clever way to introduce mechanics and characters all at once. Kind of give you a little bit of backstory on them. You can customize your 3D dice in the game settings. Okay, I'm in cautious mode. thoughtful. So do I wait it out? It said something about a stealth check. Is that just a random thing? Do I just have to redo this until I pass it? Maybe if I go like follow like the footprints gosh what am I doing all right let's read this one more time the load times are a little long I mean I'm on a NVMe drive a really fast NVMe drive with like the fastest processor GPU available practically. Use cautious mode to move stealthily. Enemies can hear you if they cross your noise circle. They spot you as soon as you leave cautious mode. Your noise circle depends on your armor type and your stealth. So it's a good idea to avoid moving into enemies' field of view while carrying a late source. 
Remain cautious. Okay, you must make a stealth check if you attempt an object interaction while within hearing distance, which has blah, blah, blah. you may not attract only if you succeed. Oh, I gotta be. That gives me two extra dexterity, but it has a stealth disadvantage. I wonder if I take it off. Oh, Liam, always thoughtful. So he didn't check me then. So taking off my armor gave me enough stealth. It's kind of weird how that works. Like for the tutorial, they should kind of just cheese it and give you, or maybe point that out a little more clearly. Pass over locked door or chest and left click if you select a party. Okay. I already have that, so I should just be able to do it. I like that it makes it uses your most uh, proficient character in your party. That's a, a nice mechanic. I like pickpocketing. I don't think I'm going to try it though. I don't think this character has a huge amount of stealth. I didn't pick a rogue type character actually. I love the actual dice that shows up on the screen. Like it really like brings home that this is a Dungeons Dragons game. Like it's you know. There are dice rolls happening. Like, I know in like Baldur's Gate and stuff that I think you can show that optionally. Why can I not? Hmm. I don't want to go down. I want to go up. Oh, that's Wait, weird. I'm seeing a trap. <gasps> to this armor track, you must first detect it. Okay. This feels so much like the earlier Baldur Gates games. Like, I mean, I know the story's in a different. It doesn't take place in that same universe, that same plane. But. Quest failed. So. Okay. Well, it doesn't look like I failed. Did I miss something? Hold it. I see a trap. That's my favorite thing about these games, is stealing everything that's not nailed down. There you are, you filthy crook! You? What? You're drunk. Get out of here before I kill you. Think you scare me? Not anymore. A grave mistake. I do hope you can skip this tutorial section after your first go. <laughs> yeah. 
Damn. She a badass. Who's that? Dude? Are you four here to see Lord Karen? Yeah. Depends on who's asking. Well, if you're here for Lord Karen of the Legacy Council, that would be me. I need to say that, you asshole. Fine. I'd like to present you with a bill for the time we just spent cooling our heels. Feel free. The Council's bursary enjoys a good laugh. Might we ask a bit more about this quest of yours, sir, if you please? Well, I suppose it's better. What do you want to know? Are we going to work for you? Not exactly, no. I'll be your contact with the Legacy Council, which you will serve as deputies. That's why we need to go there and get you sworn in. Uh, we should go, don't you think? Very well. Come, gather your things. You're late for your story. Hurry up and wait. The story of my life. I feel like I picked the wrong voice for that guy. Bob Ross. That voice does not match his face. Capital City. Right now you need to find the Legacy Council. Go north and walk up the stairs to the Sunblaze Court and take the stairs west. The bridge is closed for now. Oh, there's a map. Cool. I love these big cities. Like, like when you finally reached, uh, you know, Baldur's Gate. I just love, you know, finding all the nooks and crannies and the different stories and characters and everything. I hope this game has a really flushed out, like, kind of main city. Though, I'm not really able to interact with many of these people. Clear skies, citizens. Clear skies, citizens. I wonder if I can speed it up. Lord Karen said not to bother you. Lord Karen said not to bother you. Yet. I went north to the stairs, but they said I couldn't go that way. The bridge is closed for now. Oh, that's... Okay. I thought it was like I couldn't... It's kind of weird. The camera, like, will not go over buildings. It's strange. Let's go check out over here. Go, 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 go. Clear, clear skies, adventurers. Clear skies, adventurers. It definitely feels like the city still needs some work. Or maybe they just aren't introducing you to, like, characters with quests and stuff until you reach Lord Charon. I don't understand though. I went north, but it won't let me, you know, cross the bridge. Do I need to fight these dudes? The bridge is closed for now. The council, the council's in the opposite direction. I thought you said go north. Wait a minute. 
I know how to use a compass. This way is north. It's just the way they started you is kind of disorienting where you're facing, you know, what would normally be north in your mind. Just ignore me. This place is magnificent. Good day to you. Good day to you, deputies. The mayor is just chilling out on a on a stage. I'm busy. Come back later. I'm busy. Come back later. Stay in the light, citizens. Stay in the light, citizens. The uh, the music's pretty decent. It feels appropriate for this type of game. The law provides, adventurers. Law preserve us. The owl watch over you, faithful one. We do require your services. Okay, it's a shop. So you need faction to get that. Nothing I really need. I thought he said to go to the Sunblaze Court, but I don't see this Legacy Council. Clear skies, adventurers. Far to your blade. One of the faithful, I see. Nice to meet you. I am Chaplain Dallin Lark. You can come here at any time to seek the help of the church. That is good to know, Chaplain. We do require your services. So just another shop. So it shows on my map. Legacy Council. Is it over here, maybe? But it, like it shows it, and he even said, like, go north and then go west, right? That's cool, cool. The the map like initially just looks 2D, but you can actually spin it around and kind of has like 3D depth to it. I feel like this shouldn't be this complicated. It will not let me go up there, which I would assume is where the council is. So maybe it's over. No. Oh, maybe up here. I feel like that's not as clear as it could be, if that's the right way. But look at the, the mini-map over here, it does show. I wish it showed up on the map, too, because there's nothing directing you to go this way. There we go. There's life yet, adventurers. Araki smiled on you. Lady of life, a follower of the goddess. We do require your services. I, it's like, I feel like there's not enough interaction at this stage. Like, the only people I've been able to really interact with and have more than, like, a single line of conversation I I'd get so close are the shopkeepers. I really hope there's more depth to it. 
Maybe after the story picks up. Look at the size of this council hall. So, this is what they spend our taxes on. Look. Is that the princess? Dude's like oh, Wait. Is she leaving? Apparently so. I was going to say that. Then who will administer the oath? There's an oath keeper for that, I think. You thought it would be the princess? Doesn't she lead the council? No. In this chamber, she's just another delegate. Lady Keen, the council's oath keeper, is trusted by all. Lord Caron. Yes, my lady. Are these your new deputies? They are, my lady. My name is Lyra Keen, oath keeper of the council. Point down. And I will be administering <laughs> your vows. Once sworn in, you will carry the authority of the council wherever you go. Your Put every down. action will reflect upon the council's reputation. Remember that, always. Now, please, raise your right hands. Do you, each and all, solemnly swear your lives and allegiance to this council and promise to carry forth our mission to protect our alliance from any who would threaten the common good. I swear. I swear. Excellent. You. Lord Caron will enter your name into the council's register. Thank you for your service. Congratulations, deputies. Wait, that's it? That Frankly, the speech was long enough for my taste. The formality reflects the solemnity of your oath, but more would probably be immodest. So, the mission. As I'm sure you know, the council to secure the border between the Principality and the March. One of them is the former Imperial Fortress, KLM. It's held by some 50 troops under the command of Captain Henrik. He sends us weekly status reports, or rather, he used to. We haven't heard a word from him. Leave immediately for KLM and find out if any if Captain Henrik or anyone else is still breathing. The council wants a fur. What can you tell us about this? A fine officer. More than 50. He inspires trust, loyalty, and courage. Hence. Yeah, right. Let's go. I guess that's that. It's on to KLM. So far, I like the faction relations. So far, I like the um, like the gameplay, like the actual, you know, the way you use your powers and your attacks, and like the grid system and everything, and the way it looks. Um, I haven't done you know, but a couple of tutorial fights, but the combat seems, you know, pretty pretty good compared to these D and D games. Uh, definitely an evolution of like Baldur's Gate 1 and 2. The interactions with the non-playable characters, like the story ones are pretty decent. Not perfect, like the animation could use a little bit of work. Come back late. I'm busy. But like in Come traditional Baldur's Gate games, like all these characters you'd be able to interact with and find out stuff about them. You'd have tons of party interactions and like I feel like that is the thing that's missing so far. Maybe it's not done, maybe I'll see more of it later. But I'm, I'm kind of missing... Because the, the combat was... You know, it's it's turn-based, more st strategic. Um, but I feel like it was the world-building and the characters and the space you share uh, those things with that was more interesting in these type of games. And so far... I'm not completely feeling it. I know I'm only like an hour in, but um, yeah, I'm going to give this more time. I think I might end it here. I feel like this is kind of like the end of the tutorial area. Um, I might end it here and then probably play some more this weekend and see if I can get into some more action. But uh, keep an eye out. I'll have some more videos posted this weekend. My computer was down for a few days, so I apologize. I haven't posted much for a couple of days, but uh, expect some more coming. And uh, if you uh, if you enjoy this video, check out some of my other videos. If you like what I'll you see, I'll be with you in a minute. Uh, consider giving me a subscription. You know, I'm not monetized. There's no advertisements or anything. I just do this because uh, I enjoy sharing the games that interest me. So if you enjoyed this, think about subscribing and thank you for watching.